Rain can be composited many different ways, but today I will be showing you three different ways to do it inside of After Effects. We will be utilizing Production Crate's brand new collection of Rain on Window effects. Pro users can download the 4K variations, while free users can download a free looping rain effect for no price at all. So sign up, hit download, and let's get started! So the first and easiest way that you can composite rain onto your background footage is to simply drag our asset over the background, and there you go, that's done in less than a second. However, since we are only layering the asset over the background, there's no interaction with the background. A raindrop distorts the light that passes through it, and we're not really getting any of that. It seems more like a ghost over the background. And that brings us onto our next technique. So to get started, once again, we will be dragging our rain asset over the footage, and then we will hide it temporarily. Now we will be adding a special effect called CC Glass. And CC Glass does a great job at using information from another layer, which we will be using the rain layer for. And we will use its alpha channel to determine the amount of distortion that we should give the background. And this can be controlled by the height parameter and the softness parameter. So after some experimentation, it seems the best settings are a low softness value and a high height value. The good thing about this technique is that you can see the light is now being correctly distorted through the raindrop. Now the problem that I have with CC glass is that the results can often be very noisy and sharp and weird while we're looking for a more bubbly, soft surface. Now you can increase the softness slider, and that does do a really nice job at cleaning it up, but then you get lots of uniformly sized raindrops, and often they have this sharp cone shape to them, while rain droplets are more rounded. And that brings us to our third and final technique, which will take a bit more time, but I think it will be worth it. So to get started, as usual, we will be dragging the rain asset over the background and pre-composing it into a new pre-composition. Now we want to convert this into a black and white image, however we still have a transparent background, so all we have to do is create a black solid and put it below. And then I will pre-compose this once again. So now that we are at this stage, we want to convert the footage into a height map. A height map uses a gradient between black and white to represent the height of a texture. So to get started, I will be duplicating the layer and blurring it just a little, so something like three. And in a new adjustment layer, I will be using a curves effect to control the shape of the water droplet, so that instead of a smooth ramp, we can convert it to a sharp, steep incline followed by a nice, smooth fall off. So to do that, simply drag in the base a little and then bring it up steeply, 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 and then get a nice soft fall off at the top. So while this is a passable result, I would like to spend a bit more effort to reduce the lumpiness of the water droplet here. In the real world, this would behave more like a single stream of water instead of a lumpy, patchy conglomerate of multiple droplets. So to begin this, remember that we had a duplicate of the rain layer down below. So let's isolate this temporarily, and we don't have any blurring applied. What we want to do is isolate these big streamy water droplets, which may sound like an impossible task, but all we have to do is duplicate this layer again, and set it to a different transfer mode, and then offset it just slightly. And you can see how magically we are keying out all of the tiny droplets and only getting the big ones that are actually moving. 
Now to fill up this tiny empty patch here, what we want to do is duplicate this top layer again and drag it over the empty patch. And you can see how this just loops effortlessly. Lovely. So now let's pre-compose these three layers and I will rename it to large droplets. Since these are still quite lumpy, we will be applying a blur to it, but in the vertical direction, just enough to make it a nice smooth shape. And then we will apply another blur in both horizontal and vertical directions, just to round the shape into a single droplet instead of a double droplet. So now let's recombine the two layers by dragging the large droplets over the rain droplets and setting it to an add transfer mode. Now the problem is that you can see that the smaller rain droplets are still adding their messiness to the larger smooth droplets that we created. And so we want to mask out the smaller droplets where the large droplets are present. There's a few ways to do it, but one way is to set the transfer mode back to normal, duplicate the large droplet layer, and the one beneath we will be renaming to large droplets mask. Now from here I will be adding an extract effect and keying out the darkest areas of the rain droplet. Only by a tiny amount though. So that when I isolate the layer, you can see that the alpha channel is back. So now let's blur the mask just a little bit. And then use a curves effect to make it more opaque. Re-enable the other layers and set the large droplets back to add. You can see now the large droplets have this boundary around them where the smaller droplets will not appear. And so if I re-enable and hide the mask, you can see it's just working as expected. Now the cool thing is that we can use the threshold to determine how many of the smaller droplets we should uh, enable or hide. And so feel free to fine tune it until you're getting just the right quantity. Now I want to be sure that the large droplet still has a very steep edge and so separately I will just add a quick curves effect to steepen it once again. I'm back in my main composition and now I want to convert the height map into a normal map. You can either do this using a free plugin called Normality. Alternatively, you can use our upcoming preset in the LaForge plugin. All you have to do is go to Extensions, LaForge, and on the Presets page, locate the Normal Mapper. Select it and hit Apply Selected Preset. And instantly, you can see that the height map has been converted into a purple normal map. The amazing thing about a normal map is it can be used to direct the ray of light as it passes through the raindrop. So if I isolate just the red channel, you can see that we are using the red channel to determine how far horizontally we should distort the ray. And likewise, we can use the green channel to direct it vertically. So let's begin by hiding the normal map. And in our background footage layer, let's add a very simple displacement map effect. Then as the displacement map layer, let's select the rain. And since we applied the normal map converter, we want to make sure we're using the effects and masks. Now from here, we can set the maximum displacement values to negative 200 in each direction. And suddenly you have a very nice looking rain distortion effect. I can't get over how good the thick droplets look compared to the previous CC glass method where it was very lumpy and weird and let's go back to that and oh, look at the difference. It looks like a, an iPhone wallpaper or some other stock photo. And remember, you're using a height map, so you can modify this however you want and add your own things to it, such as this text. I would love to know what your favorite technique was out of the three. Do you prefer the speed of CC glass 
or do you prefer the quality but difficulty of the third technique? Thank you so much for watching and remember to make it awesome!